He promised to answer all of our questions, no matter how difficult. Ershad Ahmadi from the Office of the President of Afghanistan. Tonight on Public Exposure, I'm Stan Emmert, and this is, a, is an absolute thrill because, as you know, we have followed what has gone on in the Middle East for quite some time. But first, we say to two of our crew members who are having a difficult time tonight, Marianne and Harry, get well soon. Thank you to Greg and Marvin for stepping in. Ershad, welcome to the show. Thank you very much. Yes, so your travels have uh, been long, no doubt. You're uh, here uh, th with the World Affairs Council uh, mm -hmm. through the International Visitors Program. Mm -hmm. Yes, so uh, I just have mm -hmm. been uh, part of this international uh, leadership uh, visitor program sponsored by the U.S. Department of State and of course the World Affairs Council is one of uh, their partners in uh, arranging our program. So it mm -hmm. has been uh, an interesting experience. Well, very good. Let's go ahead and get the website up from uh, the uh, the Office of the President. This is President Karzai's website. It's uh, president.gov.af. Now, you actually work for President Karzai, correct? That's right. And you're the chief of presidential programs? Yes. What does that do? What do you do? <laughs> well, uh, uh, the name of uh, my department is quite misleading, I must say. Uh, uh, this department was uh, established a little more than two years ago. Uh, when I first joined uh, the office of the president and, and this department was initially called the office of planning and strategy uh, uh, but later on we we uh, renamed it to programs uh, so we do a whole range of activities uh, in support of uh, President uh, Karzai's uh, job uh, we uh, uh, do uh, I just mean I have departments and uh, dealing uh, with his speeches, uh, yeah. tra mm -hmm. trying to make sure that he has uh, his speeches for different occasions, yes. whether national or international uh, events. Uh, we do his talking points, briefings. So overall, we want to we make sure that he is uh, he has all the necessary information when he makes uh, some important decisions mm -hmm. and we do we do make sure that his daily activities uh, are arranged in a way that reflect his uh, strategic goals mm -hmm. and his priorities and his promises that he made to, n to the nation before his election. Now you're a, a, a well-educated young man. Uh, you're mm -hmm. uh, educating from Kabul University, is that right? Yes, uh, I studied in Kabul University and then I did um, uh, a program, an executive MBA in development studies in Pakistan, uh, and then I did uh, a master's in governance and development at the University of Sussex, UK. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, over the years we've had different topics about Afghanistan on, and, and we, we must remark about how beautiful uh, some parts of the country are. Let's go, if we can, let's go to some of the beautiful parts of Afghanistan right now. There's a camel, camels are always beautiful. And yes, just going. It's an. Where is that? This is Bauman. This is actually the two uh, very historical Buddhas, which were unfortunately uh, destroyed by mm. the Taliban. And one of the most uh, recognized pictures to Americans, anyway, of anyone uh, from Afghanistan is a picture from National Geographic of uh, probably 25 years ago. Absolutely uh, gorgeous picture. Uh, gorgeous uh, young woman at the time. But things changed, did they not? <coughs> things have changed, of course. I mean, uh, uh, Afghanistan, uh, if you look uh, at its history, it has gone through uh, lots of uh, ups and downs. And of course, today, at the current time, we, we are uh, at one of those critical stages in our history. And things have changed definitely from the uh, Soviet time to, to the uh, uh, Mujahideen time and of mm -hmm. course when the Taliban came and now from 2001 to 2008 great changes can mm -hmm. be seen in Afghanistan. Well every American knows where he or she was on September the 11th 2001 and let's actually go just a little bit of a remembrance of that let's see if we can full screen that there we are do you remember where you were on this day 
I remember very well, very vividly actually. I was sitting in my office uh, in Islamabad. I was working for the World Health Organization, uh, who was of course de dealing with, uh, with Afghanistan. Uh, I was actually, uh, you know, uh, working on this polio er eradication program uh, for Afghanistan where we were immunizing children to prevent uh, para paralysis and, and, and mm -hmm. polio, yeah. So that was a, th a so tragic day for all of us. What did you think when you heard about that tragedy, uh, tragedy and then it was tied to someone who was so closely connected to Afghanistan? Well, I mean, uh, <clears throat> just of course, uh, 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 the first thing, uh, I, I'm just, I mean, f for a few hours, uh, I was really uh, shocked and, and couldn't clearly think what 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 uh, what the linkages uh, would would be in regard to Afghanistan. But uh, later on, uh, once uh, I reflected upon it, I, I understood that uh, this would be a turning point for for the world, for the whole world uh, uh, overall, and for Afghanistan in particular. And like it or not, uh, bin Laden seems to still be with us. Uh, in fact, uh, just in today's media, Al Bawaba, <coughs> here, here's uh, bin Laden calls to retake Palestine by fire and iron. Bin Laden slammed attempts to achieve reconciliation between Palestinians and Israelis. Palestine cannot be retaken by negotiations and dialogue, but with fire and iron. Do Af Afghans, the people of Afghanistan, want to join bin Laden and go retake Palestine? Definitely not. Uh, uh, just actually, uh, Afghans have been victimized uh, by him and by the people that he uh, supported in Afghanistan for years. Uh, the atrocities that he uh, committed against the people of Afghanistan is unforgettable. And, and just, of course, uh, if, uh, and just, I mean, the Afghan people uh, together with the help uh, from the United States, actually uh, made them, you know, uh, uh, just you know, defeat uh, a country that that he was ruling in 2001. To, uh, you know, together with his uh, uh, local allies, uh, the Taliban. So never the people of Afghanistan uh, would be uh, would. I, I mean, I can't imagine, uh, ha, you know, Afghans uh, being with, with Osama uh, to go and, and do something in Palestine. This is, this well, is out of my imagination. Th this next situation is something that I, I completely don't understand, and this is over their, their cartoon issue in <coughs> Europe. Bin Laden, and this is out of a German newspaper, Bin Laden threatens Europe over the Mohammed cartoons. The message attributed to Bin Laden says attacks by Europeans on women and children paled in comparison when you uh, went overboard in your unbelief and went to the extent going on. If there is no check on the freedom of your words, then let your hearts be open to the freedom of our actions. Afghanistan is an Islamic nation. Does bin Laden speak for the people of, uh, the Islamic people of Afghanistan? Definitely not, uh, just, uh uh, the people of Afghanistan have uh, uh, clearly uh, dec um, and just, I mean, declared uh, their uh, opposition to, to, to him and to the Taliban when they participated in uh, democratic elections. Uh, you know, uh, just even uh, while they were threatening to, to just uh, kill if, if they uh, participate in that uh, process. So definitely Al-Qaeda and all those uh, discordant voices, uh, the min you know, they, they are a small <coughs> my minority of bigoted individuals who could never represent Af just Afghanistan and let alone the rest of the Islamic world. Let's talk about the government of Afghanistan. Uh, and of course you work for the president. Uh, there is an article in the Chicago Tribune just from <coughs> earlier this week of March the 16th. It's from Kabul. And it says, weak government tops Afghanistan's ills, the Taliban uh, resurgent to drug trade and thriving and et cetera, et cetera. And then they say this, electricity is intermittent, 
The uh, rutted dirt roads are barely passable without four-wheel drive. Most people live in mud brick rooms or Soviet-era concrete apartments. Suicide bombs occasionally explode. Men with guns can be seen on street corners even though they're not police or army, and even though many are loyal to one of the country's uh, most infamous warlords. Is that the way your country is now? Well, I just I do uh, differ with uh, some of the statements and do uh, just agree with uh, some of them. Just I mean, let's 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 be uh, real, you know, realistic. Afghanistan have gone through 30 year, years of you know war and, and uh, conflict. So we are behind the rest of the world for 30 years. And before that, I mean, he, just even. 30 years ago, just Afghanistan was not a well-developed uh, country. So, so while we we are trying to develop our institutions, while we are trying to build our lives, while we are trying to deliver services to our population, at the same time we are facing we just an enemy, and we are fighting. So it is very challenging to fight while you are building yourself. So just I think, just of course, uh, I just I mean, I do agree with uh, some of the uh, statements like, you know, electricity, while I mean, 6% of Afghan population have that luxury. Uh, so it is things are not perfect, but definitely there has been great strides uh, in, in, in just in a lot of uh, sectors, including uh, and just energy, economic uh, development, education, and health that, that uh, let's we can talk about. Yeah, let's continue on with the article. The article continues on, and it says, uh, Afghanistan is in a stalemate, and the biggest challenge is not necessarily the Taliban-led insurgents, problems with the NATO alliance, nor the slow pace of reconstruction. Instead, it is the U.S.-backed Afghan government, which analysts and some government officials say is not only weak, but rife with corruption from local police in the remote provinces, to high-level ministries in Kabul. And in fact, the article goes on to say that some people claim that President Karzai is basically the mayor of Kabul. That is not uh, true. Uh, just actually, uh, just I mean, uh, in the last uh, few months, there has been uh, similar uh, media reports which, which have not been based on, on, on actual uh, fact and the current uh, situation in Afghanistan. So uh, just I do uh, differ uh, with that assessment. And just I think uh, uh, since two, 2002, uh, uh, just up to now, uh, just up to now, there there has been great developments, uh, and the and the Afghan government has been able to reach out uh, to to most of the provinces, and and it has. Uh, exercised its uh, just authority. So you you don't see many of those uh, warlords who were once uh, you you know at well vi vi you know violating human rights uh, and just you know uh, exercising uh, their own uh, fee you know mm -hmm. fiefdoms. So that that is not the situation. But of course, I mean we are. I mean corruption is. Definitely, that you know, just existing, but but Can most of it, it okay. is perception. Most of it is uh, perception from an Afghan perspective. Most of the or a, a large amount of corruption just happens out of the Afghan, you know, government institutions. It is the external part of it. When, for example, some donors or uh, uh, just w want to build a school, they they give the contract to a to an uh, just international firm, and then that international firm subcontracts it to a, to an NGO, and then that that in just NGO gives that contract again, subcontracting it to a local Afghan NGO. So if you look at this process, most of the misuse and most of the wastage happens in this long and, and uh, very complicated and, and, and non-transparent uh, way. So, and just, and of course, uh, just, I mean, the, all of the reconstruction assistance do not come through the Afghan institutions. I mean, uh, most of it is spent 
by do by donors as well. Mm. So let's, let's so go on to the to the next statement. This is interesting. Sure. It says that the uh, U.S. National Intelligence Director Mike McConnell said last month in Washington that the resurgent Taliban now controls about 10 percent of the country, and Karzai's government controls only about 30 percent. The rest is under tribal control, which often means warlords. Um, Kabul is one part, but the rest of the country, is it more warlords or is it more uh, the extended government of President Karzai? Uh, just I think uh, it is the extended, uh, per, I mean, just I mean, uh, just authority of the national government. Uh, this was probably the case a few years ago, but things have changed now. I can't imagine uh, a province in Afghanistan where uh, the rule of the central government is not observed. So uh, just uh, I'm, I'm just I mean let's 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 uh, see see it in this way. Afghanistan has 34 provinces. Most of our uh, problems are in less than 10 percent of the provinces, which in just in which six percent of our population lives. Mm. So so to just generalize in that way is not. Uh, representing the the ground, re, you know, realities, and just I mean, well, let's just talk about of the course, economy. we are weak, but we are there. Okay, let's talk about the economy just a little bit, uh, because in the in the article it says that poppies are also feeding basically the the opium trade is are also feeding the insurgency. Mm -hmm. Up to forty percent of the money fueling terrorism in in Afghanistan is from the heroin and opium trade, said uh, U.S. General Dan McNeil, the commander of NATO troops in Afghanistan, in a March 9th interview. We have had several people on from NGOs talking about how Afghanistan is. Um, and this was several years ago, was going to get rid of the opium trade, but it doesn't seem to have happened. Is, mm -hmm. is, is it still a pretty heavy part of the economy? It is, it is. Uh, just, I mean, uh, it is a huge uh, challenge. And expecting that we would be able to, to solve it in the short, you know, just in the short term, uh, would be naive. What is uh, the what is the economy of Afghanistan outside of Kabul? What what do people do to live? I think it's, it is uh, just I mean uh, uh, most of the uh, just I mean the most uh, important uh, livelihood of course comes from agriculture. Uh, just on a, just um, uh, and of course there are other. Uh, 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 components that form uh, different parts of the economy, but definitely just, agri just mm -hmm. agriculture is the main uh, sector. Mm -hmm. uh, Let's go to the Wall Street Journal today. Mm -hmm. uh, Cheney and Karzai, Cheney being the Vice President of the United States, Karzai want more NATO effort in Afghanistan. This is just again today. And this is a quote from President Karzai saying, someday Afghanistan will be fully in charge of the security of this country defending the borders, but that is not going to be any time soon. How long does Afghanistan want a U.S. military presence there? Well, uh, justify uh, the people of Afghanistan. I must say, have the the aspiration uh, not to be a liability uh, just on the rest of the world, even for a single day. But but uh, we do understand the challenges. We do. Uh, uh, we do wish to stand our own feet. Uh, uh, we wish that. But at the same time, uh, we are recovering uh, from a long period of war. So in order to build uh, just our institutions, in order to stand our own feet, uh, we would need a long-term support and any weakening resolve uh, on the part of international uh, community and on our part emboldens uh, the Taliban and Al-Qaeda. Uh, so uh, just I think I can't specifically say a time, but we do need a long-term commitment and we need to stay the course. 
We're going to take a very short break. I just wanted to remind everyone that we're talking with Ershad Ahmadi, who is uh, from the, uh, the chief of presidential programs from the Office of the President of the Nation of Afghanistan. He's brought to us through the International Visitors Program at the World Affairs Council, and we thank the World Affairs Council very much for uh, bringing him to us. Strongly encourage you to learn more about the World Affairs Council. Go to the website. It's right up there on the screen, world-affairs.org. Learn more about the World Affairs Council and the world around you. Now, Rashad, we're going to take advantage of your vast international experience and ask you some questions about the region. And we're going to start off with this. Just what do the Taliban want in Afghanistan? Well, uh, the, the Taliban have a very uh, narrow world view, and they want to impose it on the rest of the Afghan uh, population. Uh, just on, of course, I must say that the Taliban is not a local uh, uh, organization. It is not. It is not arisen out of the Afghan land. It has it. It's, it has its roots in the region. That is why uh, just it is uh, Im just important that when we are talking about the Taliban, uh, we have to think of the region as a whole. Taliban. What's the, what's the difference between the Taliban and the Al, Al Qaeda? That is a problem. I just I mean, for for an Afghan, uh, there is no difference. Uh, it is the Al Qaeda at just at first and Taliban second. Of course, some Afghans provide the foot soldiers for the Taliban, but the sanctuaries, the place where they are indoctrinated, their source of finance, their source of training is outside Afghanistan, and it is controlled by uh, foreign militants belonging to al-Qaeda. Where? Where are they from? Are they from Iran? That's what the United States says. Well, I mean, uh, and they, uh, they come from different, you know, countries, mm -hmm. I, just I must say. It is an international network. Well, let's, let's go to some of these other areas then. How, how does the European Union, very, very strong economic bloc now and, and group of countries, how do they diminish the appeal of the Taliban? Uh, just I think that the European Union have been uh, playing a very uh, positive and, and uh, constructive role. And, and uh, just in order uh, for them uh, to help us, uh, they, they have been a partner with, with us since uh, 2001. And uh, just, just again, I mean, the, the European Union uh, can do a lot. Just are in they terms welcome of if they don't provide military aid? Are they welcome if they don't? Uh, well, uh, I think um, if you if you look at Afghanistan as an Afghan problem, uh, and if you don't understand. Uh, uh, the consequences of not engaging in Afghanistan, which uh, unfortunately and just in, uh, in some countries the population do not really understand what what is at a stake. Uh, How about in Russia? Afghanistan. How about Russia? How does Russia diminish the appeal of, of uh, the Taliban? Because you know the Russia is to a large extent the former Soviet Union, which was in in war with Afghanistan. Um, but at the same point in time, there are many people who are from Russia that, that probably have a strong affinity for Afghanistan. So how is the relationship between Russia and Afghanistan now? Uh, the relationship between Afghanistan and Russia uh, has been constructive since, since uh, uh, 2001. And they have actually benefited uh, from the fact that the, Tal that the Taliban is no longer ruling Afghanistan. Uh, and, and they have understood uh, uh, and, and they have supported the process of uh, reconstruction in Afghanistan. And I hope that it will mm. continue. Will Afghanistan permit Russia to put an oil pipeline through the country uh, on its way south to a sea? Uh, well, uh, I just, I mean, uh, first, uh, first of all, uh, 
and just I mean the people of uh, such such a thing has not been discussed uh, probably just at this time uh, but of course it would be half up to the people of Afghanistan if uh, such an offer is made to be accepted or not. How about the United States? What can we do here to diminish the appeal of the Taliban in, Af in Afghanistan and in the region? I think the, the United States has, has already done a lot uh, in Afghanistan. Uh, the people of Afghanistan are uh, very, very grateful, actually. Uh, do the people want us out, though? The people do not want the, the United States out. I can definitely uh, say that. But of course, the people of Afghanistan want, uh, want to stand on their own feet. Uh, this is uh, their aspiration, and th this is what, what uh, they have been fighting for. So, so they would welcome a, a continued engagement uh, from the United States. And, and they would welcome uh, just, you know, uh, U.S. Uh, reconstruction assistance in solving our current challenges. So it is not a question of moral duty towards Afghanistan. It is a question that now the interests of Afghanistan and the interests of the United States is converging at this point in history. We only have about a minute left, and I have many, many, many more questions, but I'm going to end with this question in, in the 30 seconds or so that we have. If you were the supreme being, if you were God, and you could do with Afghanistan what you wanted, what would you do for your country? Gosh, I think I would, I would listen to the, to, to the wishes and aspirations of the Afghan people. I think uh, if I were a supreme being uh, the people of Afghanistan per, I mean they want simple things they want I mean just I mean I've been in the United States for three weeks now and and just and I've been exposed to common I'm um, just um, just um, um, American people they want a simple life they want their children to, f to feel safe they want a nice job they want a house they want education and I think that is what the people of just Afghanistan want as well. They want to be safe. They, they want to have a job. And that is what I would grant them. And with that, that's the last word. Thank you very much for being with us. And go to the World Affairs Council website, learn more. We'll see you right here on Public Exposure next week.